back. Get back. Okay, okay, okay. I knew you'd come up here. You're kind of a little rebel right now, escaping and stuff. It's a really good feeling as you pull up to your place and there's no bison in the front. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross the with Bison. I'm Dusty. That's Maya. Marissa's working on some merchandise in the office. If you're ever interested, you can go check out our website, crosstimmersbison.com. See all the awesome things that uh, my wife has done. She's done a great job with all the merchandise. Got some cool stuff going on, like the hoodie here. Oh yeah, love it, love it. So, a couple issues I want to start off with. One, the bison got out after we worked them. They're up here with me right now because I just opened the gate to start letting them in. Marissa and I pulled up here Sunday morning. The day after the working, the first thing you do is when you top the hill, you look down and you try to see Dunbar and Haas. No Dunbar and Haas. No bison at all. It's a really good feeling as you pull up to your place and there's no bison in the front. It took just a couple seconds for me to realize a mistake. Now, what happened is Dunbar or Haas basically shoved this panel over and gave it a lane. And so all of them, the three cows, Dunbar, Haas, and the two ladies that we were keeping for the sale disappeared. What do we do now? Well, you got to catch them. I opened up all the gates so they could come in. I didn't even feed them yesterday. Didn't give them cubes. I didn't give them hay, nothing. I'm making sure that they're hungry because I got to catch them all and sort them again. Got hay over there. They're just feeding this. This is while they're up here eating this. Got core tied up. I made another pen right here where Jackie sleeping. I'm going out in the pasture right now with the ATV. I'm gonna leave Marissa here at the barn because I need her to swoop through and shut the gate behind me. But I'm gonna go out, try to get them up, round them up with the sack of cubes if they'll come. Here's the goal. I gotta get Dunbar. I gotta get Haas. I gotta get those two females I'm taking to the sale for sure. Those are the four main ones that I gotta get uh, because I gotta take those females to the cell like <laughs> very very soon maya okay Ma maya it's ready um and we're gonna let's do it we're gonna hop in the atv and see if we can get them how's it going jackie okay we got our feed sack 50 pound 14 percent protein cubes let's go get them Don't have to go far. I haven't seen the ATV out here in a while. There's some ducks. All right, so they're already kind of responding, and I don't have to catch them all. So I don't have to catch them all. Exactly. Is this the jumper? Well, hello, 54. Oh, they're running now. So here's an example of a calf right here in front of me. We went ahead and tagged it, but really, thank you. Um, we went ahead and tagged this calf right here. We let it back out with mama for a little bit longer. Felt like it was, mama was pretty healthy and uh, just wanted to make sure, get a little bit more weight gain on it from mama before we brought it back in to wean it. I've made mistakes in the past of pulling them off a little too soon just because we were working them and i didn't think i could catch them again but i think there's ways that we can catch them so like this calf here just wasn't quite ready i didn't feel like little bull so we put all the calves what we do with all of our animals bulls get a get a tag on the right ear Hevers get a tag on the left, so that's just an instant verification of what you got. 
What are you talking about? Is that your baby? Must be your baby. So they're all coming to visit. They do have a tub out here, so that's the only thing they really have. They're grazing a little bit. There's, there's not much to graze right now. So I'm going to kind of let them make their way towards me, but I don't see the bulls really. Well, there, oh, there's Dunbar. Okay, I see Dunbar back there. Here he comes. It's a good sign. I may have to go kind of round them up a little bit, push them, get their blood running a little bit. Yep, see there's another munchkin. That one's so small. Born late, new mama. Right there, there's her mama, 137. And there's another one. Anytime that they have that cinnamon look or red dog look still, you definitely don't want to start winning them at all. Well, they're calmly making their way over here again. If you guys don't remember, right here, this is Bell Star. Bell Star was the cow that lost her calf at the very, very beginning of the um, calving season. Uh, we raised her. She's from one of Doc Parsons' original. <laughs> She uh, is the first calf that we ever lost. Watch that video too. Very sad situation. All right. So here's some more of these calves while I'm just waiting here on some of the bulls to show up. I don't see Big Joe, which I'm not worried about him. All right, so Dunbar made his way up here. He's kind of keeping a distance. I can get him with a sack of cubes here in just a second. doing okay so uh, I'd rather get them all in one motion because you can't take a group up there get them up there and then come back and try to get some more I don't think that'll work because it, with bison you, you whatever you get you take it and uh, I want to take it all if I can so Dunbar he just was anxious to get back to some females which I don't blame him Hey, buddy. I knew you'd come up here. You're kind of a little rebel right now, like escaping and stuff. <sighs> Dunbar was a little wormy this year too. He lost some weight. Uh, he had to actually have to. He had to work this summer pretty hard between him and Haas. First time Dunbar had really had that many females, so he lost a little bit of weight, and he was wormy. Uh, easy way to tell that is when you haven't lost, they hadn't lost their coat, some of their last year's winter coat, but he's doing okay. I got him uh, some dewormer, and that'll help him get through the winter as well. All right, so let's uh, see what we can do here. Hey, buddy, back up. Let's go get everybody else. I see them. They're kind of making their way up here. Shake the bag and let them know we're here. Get their attention. Oh yeah, see she coming hot. Little calf. Let's see if I can give them a little yell. Some of them are running. They see me now. <laughs> I love it when they run like that. Like, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. This is the kind of attention I want. I don't know if, you know, we get her. Nicole. There's Big Joe. See him. See Haas. They're over there on the hill. running 
<laughs> I love this 1507. She's from South Dakota. She's the most interesting two-year-old heifer I think that we have. And uh, I think I'm going to call her Christy. You guys can apply that. I uh, saw Christy at the roundup at the <laughs> Custer State Governor's Roundup in 2021. Out there riding horses, rounding up some wild bison at Custer State Park. And uh, they love their governor, and I, she seems to have it going on. And so um, I, I, like, I like her style, out what she's doing. She, she loves bison, and uh, she is a supporter of some good friends of mine, Dakota Pure Bison in South Dakota, that, that uh, raise bison and, and have a great business of selling bison. Oh, look at Big Joe. Big Joe's here, and Dunbar walks away. Cut off right there. Here they come. I see Hoss now. But anyways, I think I'm going to start calling her Christy. I think it's a good name. 1507. You guys let me know what you think. and I'm sure you figure out who it's applying to. Hey, get, get back. Get back. Okay, okay, okay. That's enough. Let's, uh, let's all go. I think everybody will come. It's getting, getting tight now. I think they found us. Here we go. Come on, Christy. Moment of truth. Sorry for the squeaky. Come on. I see some of them coming. coming in I'm gonna keep spreading cubes out Haas. Once Haas comes in, it's kind of where we need to be. Okay, he's in. Ah, oh, there's one more cow out there. I need to get. Pouring out some more cubes for these guys. There's one more cow. pull over here so I'm shut this
the last cow. Okay, I think we got him now. They're not in a hurry to get out because they know they got food in here. Technically, the only one left is Eleanor. I'm not worried about Eleanor. All right, we got him. Make sure this is locked. No more of those human errors. Okay, you guys are watching me. Latched, hooked. Okay. All caught again. <sighs> ah, the fun now begins. That was the easy part. Now we gotta work them. Or what we call gate cut. That's what we gotta do now. That's the fun part. Now I gotta get Marissa out here. <laughs> so we got Dunbar. Bar's off. Oz right there. Big Joe, he went in there as well. Oh, there's Big Joe. He's smelling around. Okay. All right, guys. We got him caught. Wasn't so bad, but like I said, now the work begins. Um, I'm going to run in here and get Marissa. And I know there's something I hadn't been showing you guys. And I'm terrible about it. I'm terrible about it. And I'm so sorry. But I've been working very, very hard on this barn. Besides our roundup and all that, I've been working on the inside of our barn. I want to show you guys around a little bit. You guys take a look here. All right. Here it is. You guys are like, oh, what's that? Well, this, this bison uh, head <laughs> is from a local taxidermist slash cabinet builder. Randy built our cabinets and um, he also uh, drew out a bull hunt several years ago here in Oklahoma and then he mounted that and um, his wife won't let him put it in the house. So <laughs> he, uh, he uh, said that we could have it in here and um, he, he said, as long as you don't sell it. So there you go, we have a bison head in there. We don't have our own yet, so, but here it is. I uh, have a TV right here, fireplace, electric fireplace. You can see the animals out there and everything. Got an island, got our cabinets. We still haven't stained these yet. We just got these doors on, so we've got some staining to do. The floor's getting worked on as well. That's our countertop, guest bathroom, a private bathroom in there, and then a utility room for laundry and storage and all that stuff. And so you can look out here, sink will be there, dishwasher, all the fun stuff. Here it is. You ready? What? Gate cut. They want out. Go females. Go. Go, go, go. She's just wanting groceries. Bobby, oh Bobtail. Ah, don't do that to me. Get, go. Sorry.
Okay, so far good. Get back. Back. These are the ones that we need to stay. Heifer we're selling. Dunbar Hoss. Another heifer we're selling. So we're trying to get them to go out. Chris is on it. Woo! You have to bring them to me because I can't leave my post. Ah, get out. Shoo, shoo, shoo. these shenanigans so here's some more we got to get rid of I say get rid of we're just trying to cut Big Joe doesn't need to be in here come on go All right, I got gotcha. you. Now there's some in here we want to keep. Okay? Just hold on. Did it, did it. Look, maybe an hour total. It's not terrible. Well, they're they're uh, they're hungry. Right now, he wants out. He's mad. Hoss. So we've got Dunbar, two females that we're selling, and some other females that we really don't want in our breeding program. We're making some executive decisions here. Too many animals. This is part of too many animals. So we're taking this one out, another one there, another one back here. We're taking them out of our breeding program. Uh, they will be checked to see if they're bred or not, um, but we don't want them in our program. So we're, uh, but we've got Haas Dunbar caught. We're back to the original place we were at before we worked them, plus three more like this one right here. Um, that are we're pulling out of our program. We we don't know what we're gonna do with them yet, but we're definitely pulling them out. So we got them. I'd say we're pulling them because we have too many animals. Culling them, yeah, it's yeah. a good way to put it. We're learning to be more selective and uh, utilize land to animal ratio a little bit better than maybe what we had been over uh, stocking and such. But would you agree? Disagree? Got to take care of the land. So. Though we would love to keep them all. <laughs> you have to yeah. Make executive decisions on culling. Not culling, I guess. Just cutting. No, I, that's a good word to use is, is culling. Is, uh, and then the national parks do it too. The national parks have, even like the great Yellowstone, mm -hmm. they have to essentially cut their populations down because if you get too many, you can dramatize the land and really affect the land in places like Yellowstone. That place exists because of the land um, and the animals. But it's a it's an ecosystem that they all work together with, the ecology side of it. It's a whole balance. It's a balance it's for a balance sure. Balance so if the, you know, the, there's a reason that the Yellowstone has to get rid of their excess animals and they go through the quarantine process and then they are now going to Intertribal Buffalo Council they're going to the tribes. So we do the same thing. Yep. If we don't do it, 
or they don't do it at places like Yellowstone or Custer State Park that sells the animals, then you could have overpopulations and then it could throw off a lot of stuff. But in Yellowstone, if they're not doing it, what else is doing it? If the humans aren't doing it. Who else is doing it? The wolves and the bears are doing it, which is basically going on before we started calling them nature. We got to do it too. Hey girl, you getting tied up over here. You getting tied up over here, you being a good girl. You look like Cisco from Dances with Wolves. You got mud on you and everything. Hey girl. Hi. Hey. You're a good girl. So, let me explain. This is it right here. So because it got so dark, and uh, we weren't able to work five of our bison basically we had dunbar and haas in here like we've had them pinned up in here and then we had the cows three cows in here in this area where they are pinned up uh because we didn't get them worked and i said i didn't want to stress them out so i opened the gate which is right over here back in there and uh, so Dunbar, Haas, and the two females that I was, I'm going to sell were in here. They've been in here, right? We, you, you saw that. If you haven't, you can go back and watch. We've had them pinned up here um, for about a month now, right? Get, trying to get some weight back on Dunbar and Haas from their hard work in summer. There's, there's things that I always, I always say two things why bison get out, okay? One is human error. And two, bulls are fighting. Stuff happens. But most of the time, it's human error. And we had a human error. And I'm gonna take the blame for it. When we put these freestanding panels up, they come with chain, right? There's this chain right here, right? So, let me flip this around for you. So they come with chain and they wrap around whatever it is and they loop back through here, right? Pretty simple. Well, you see this one here? It's like that right now, okay? It's chained up, it's looped through. It was not looped through and there was a gap about three foot wide right here give you a little view of it here's where our issue occurred right here right before i left the ponderosa after hanging out we hang out with our friends and stuff at the ponderosa after we work we have dinner together we had some chili that my mom made it, it's just a congregation it's a social time to hang out together and i want to thank all the people that helped me before I left, I heard some rumbling. I could hear Dunbar making a bunch of noise. And so this gate was open because I let those three cows, it was so dark, they couldn't even figure out how to get out. But they wanted to hang out with Dunbar and them right over here on this side of the fence. But I heard some rumblings going on, some deep uh, bellows or whatever you call it. And uh, I left the gate open for them. So those three cows wouldn't stress and go out. And I said, I'll just dart them. I'll get them. I'll get them wormed, not worry about it eventually. And came here. So what happened is Dunbar or Haas basically shoved this panel over and gave it a lane. Right through here is basically what happened. And so all of them, the three cows especially, Dunbar, Haas, and the two ladies that we were keeping for the sale disappeared and went out there and are all together now, which is great, right? Dunbar and Big Joe all together. And so that's where it started.